I recently reviewed a Janal Ocean Rover 2 that's an homage to the Rolex Mariner, but cost $1,800. There was a lot of discussion in the comments section about homage watches. People love them or hate them. However, one sentiment was felt across the board, the price. It was on the higher end of things. Well, my friends, today we are reviewing a watch from Baltani that comes in at $219 on the bracelet and $185 on the leather strap. Baltani does offer this watch in different colors. I'm reviewing the black one. They do have a white one and they do have it on a leather option. The name of this one is Baltani Affordable Retro NH34 GMT Automatic Watch S6073AB. Yeah, the name is not great, but is a watch any good? and in line with other models. Stick around and I'll let you know the good, the bad, and the ugly. What we have here is an homage to the new Tudor Black Bay Pro. Of course, that watch is an homage to the Rolex Explore 2, reference number 1655. There's a lot of similarities between this homage and the Tudor Pro, but it's not a one-to-one -one copy. Nonetheless, to the untrained eye, it's pretty much the same watch. Although I reviewed a lot of homage watches at this point, I still won't wear them because my brain immediately thinks, hey Miguel, that is a insert whatever brand and model the watch is trying to copy and instead of enjoying the watch on my wrist, it simply puts me in a bad mood thinking I'm wearing something that's trying to be something else. However, homage watches have their place in the world and I've learned to not judge others for what they like or don't like. Look, if you're going to go the homage route, there's a lot of brands that offer a lot of great value propositions. It really ultimately comes down to whatever brand speaks to you the most. I can assure you that Baltani is a top contender as all their watches are built great and don't break the bank. This entire watch is constructed of 316L stainless steel, weighs in at 154 grams with the incised bracelet, measures in at 39 millimeters, it's 48.5 millimeters from lug to lug, thickness is 13.2 millimeters, and in between the lugs, 20 millimeters. The screw down crown measures 6.3 millimeters and is very smooth and easy to interact with. Interesting to note, they did not sign this one and I actually don't mind. The watch does feature 200 meters of water resistance so technically you can go diving with this one, no problem. In light of the Tudor Pro Aspiration, Beltani opted to mimic the dial of that watch by using the same style snowflake hour hand and diamond shaped second and GMT hand. The indices are filled with loom and don't feature any framing around them. The date window is also frameless. They're located at the 3 o'clock. However, unlike the Pro, the color variant of the Fotina is different. There's less writing on the dial and the color of the GMT hand is orange, just like the one found on the Rolex 1655. By the way, that orange color can also be found on the word GMT. That's a good design execution. However, personally, the Fotina is a little too brown, and since the date window is white, the faux aging is a little more noticeable. When wearing the watch, you're reminded of pumpkin spice. Maybe good for some, but personally, I'm not a fan. I do, however, like the dome sapphire crystal. It really mimics acrylic, and although it adds to the thickness of the case, it just works. Technically, this watch is actually 1.4 millimeters thinner than the Pro, so that's definitely a good thing in terms of wearability. Let's talk loom. This watch features Swiss Superluminova GL Old. The loom has been applied on the hands and indices and man, it's bright. In fact, it's brighter than other more expensive Swiss watches I reviewed. Legibility in low light conditions should not be a problem with this one. The fixed 24 hour bezel is really well constructed. The brushing is clean and the transitions to the polished edges simply work and there's no sharp edges. The case also feels well constructed and just like Tudor, the sight profile is very slab sided. Most of the case is brushed, but what really took me by surprise were the bevels found on this case. For the price point, it's crazy what these companies are able to offer. As is tradition with most of their case backs, they're sterile and I've come to appreciate that. There's no writing, no fluff, just a good machine screw down piece of metal. The bracelet is mostly brushed and unlike the Tudor Pro, it doesn't have full rivets, but it doesn't feature that sweet T-fit system either. Instead, it only comes with three micro adjustments found on the male clasp. The majority of the bracelet has been brushed, but again, the attention to detail is definitely there. Not only do they incorporate screws to size the bracelet, but the bevels found on the sign clasp match the level of beveling that's on the case. Definitely surprising and refreshing to see on a watch of this price point. The female end links mean this watch wears true to size and fits great on my 6 and 7 8 inch wrists. 
The watch is comfortable and easy to wear. I would probably put it on a rubber or leather strap to decrease the weight. The caliber power in this watch is a Seiko NH34 automatic movement that can be hacked and hand wound and has proven to be one of the most popular GMT calibers in the affordable sector, bar none in the last few years. The caliber beats a 21,600 BPH, has a power reserve of approximately 41 hours, features 24 joules, and what makes this movement special is that you can track a second time zone. In the first position, you can set the orange GMT hand, and in the second position, you can interact with the hour and minute hands and also the day complication. I highly recommend a watch with a GMT complication to any watch enthusiast. It's a fun way to track multiple time zones. Sure, the caliber's accuracy is all over the place, but for the price you pay, you can't expect cost or meta certification. Look, overall, this Tudor Pro Homage is a great watch in terms of value for money. Sure, I personally don't like a few things about it, but objectively speaking, the watch is well constructed. So if you're not looking to break the bank or want to see what a Pro looks like before pulling the trigger, this is a great option. I hope at some point Baltani comes out with an original design. With their build quality and price point, it will be a true contender against brands like San Martin and outside of the homage base. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be safe out there and stay humble.